Hi, um, so you might know me as Cameo or Aquabakes on Twitter, um, and I know I don't really have a lot of followers and I don't know if I really even have any YouTube viewers, but I wanted to share my experience about going to Evermore Park, uh, mostly because I cannot wait to tell all of my friends how awesome it was, and by doing it this way, I don't have to tell them one by one. I can just share this video and they can all just see this awesome story and I won't have to like make multiple phone calls like hey oh my god I have to tell you this thing like 10 times because that would probably annoy him uh -huh. uh, that's my husband who is off screen and probably doesn't want to hear me making a ton of phone calls so um in lieu of that here's this video so I've been to Evermore Park one time before, but I didn't really do the park. I mostly just did a photo shoot with a really awesome photographer. Uh, you can check out that album with credits uh, at my Facebook page. I'll put a link in the description below for that. Um, Critical Role fans might enjoy it. So it was uh, Keyleth and Vax. And we did the same cosplays this time. Um, Keyleth and Vax from Critical Role. And you don't have to cosplay if you go to the park, but you're allowed to, and it's actually encouraged, which is kind of what makes Evermore different than other theme parks. So, like, Disneyland, you're not allowed to cosplay at all unless it's, like, their Halloween party event, which is a separate ticketed event, um, which can be kind of expensive. And... But Evermore is all about role-playing. It's kind of like an interactive theater experience. So kind of like a dinner theater, but without the dinner. And instead of a restaurant or a theater, you have the entire park. And you just get to go and interact with different actors. And I was really overwhelmed by this concept uh, when I first went. Because, one, we didn't really have a lot of time to explore because we had like maybe an hour or two left in the park after our photo shoot. And basically the name of the game is go up and talk to strangers who, you know, are actors, they're characters, but it's still go talk to strangers and ask them random stuff. And that, I don't know if I'm that great at that. I don't like bothering people and bothering people. The game doesn't sound necessarily like the most best fun time, but, you know, I love fantasy, I love role playing and... I thought I'd give it another go, and, you know, I have experience with role-playing tabletop and a little bit with some white wolf vampire stuff, but not, like, full-on dress-up, go act as a character out in the wild kind of thing. But, you know, gave it a shot, and I had a blast. It was actually incredibly fun. Like, we're leaving, and I'm like, we need to go back. We need to we need more of this. This is like incredible. So I'm going to tell you the story about what happened while we were there and why Evermore is super fun. So when we got to the park, uh, there's a line to get in. Even if you pre-buy your tickets, it's going to be like an hour line. So I guess pro tip for next time is go earlier. It was only a half hour away. It's still wrapped around, like, the building. It was still only a half hour away from when we got there to when we went in. Okay, so still, go early. Hour to half hour. Yeah. But while we were waiting, um, they gave us this. So what this is, and I have a better picture of this up on my Instagram, um, is a newspaper from the town of Evermore. And I really love this. I love it. it's tangible, it's real, and like I started reading it and immediately it's like I go to the help wanted and it's like quest hooks of like help person find spell components and all of that, you know, different things that you can do, solve these murder mysteries. It's really kind of, it felt like the start of a Dungeons and Dragons campaign where you will get these plot hooks left for you by the DM to find and you can go and do different ones. And... You know, just having this tangible thing in my hand and we're going in, it's, you know, really fun and kind of exciting. Also, um, Evermore, they have animals there. They've got, like, mini horses and they've got a bird and reptile sh show. And the uh, one of the bird handlers was out with an owl. And I love animals a lot. So I was like, oh my goodness! And I was like, can I take a picture of him? And she said, sure, he might not look at you for the picture because he like immediately turns his head around from the camera and it's an owl. So they're like really good at turning their heads around, like like really further than I can even look away. Um, but um, then I'm like, 
And then out turns and looks right at me and I get my picture. And she's like, or oh, just meow at it. I guess that works. And I was like, oh yeah, because owls are sky kittens. And she's like, oh, I, I guess they are. And she's like trying not to burst out laughing. Like he was commenting on it. It's like she almost broke character at how ridiculous the statement was. But it, it makes sense. Owls are sky kittens. Bats are sky puppies. Seals are ocean puppies. And then... Um, the, the the stingrays are actually ocean kittens, which you might not know that because they don't really look like ocean kittens. But if you've ever gone to a stingray touch, they'll come and like bump their heads against you. They're, they're like kitty cats. So yeah, pet stingrays. Um, a bit of a tangent off of Evermore, but I also recommend petting stingrays. Um, so that was fun. And we get in the park. And we're Keyleth and Vax together. And I think that helped me because I, like I said, kind of shy about the whole LARPing thing. But I'm like, okay, I'll just go into character as Keyleth and think about what she would do. And I relate to her a lot. Like, especially reading Vox Machina Origins. I'm like, oh my god, that that's so me. Uh -huh. Like, and some of her other moments too. Most of them. Um, but, so I'm, you know gonna go into that in my Keyleth cosplay and see like hey, what are Vax and Keyleth gonna do it's like all right let's and I'm like I want to solve the murders like no like none of the little quests I'm like I want to I want to solve this and um that's kind of like the big overarching story arc of the whole season but you know I'm just gonna dive right into it because I'm like that's what Keyleth would do but while you're at Evermore there's other quests to do and I guess this is going to be like some spoilers for the current storyline of Evermore Park um, as I'm explaining what we've done. So if you don't want any spoilers and want to go in blind, then don't watch this. But I do recommend maybe not going in blind because it's less o overwhelming maybe if you have an idea of like how you jump into it. Because I kind of wish I had that the first time. But I kind of managed. And some kind of magical stuff happened. So... We were walking, and the we walked past um, some of the elven rangers, and they're a guild. And there's a bunch of different guilds in Evermore, and they don't really line up to D&D &D classes exactly, so rangers are kind of like... Combination rogue. Rogue rangers. So what are yeah. the rangers' tenants? Um, stealth, cunning, and wit. Stealth that the shadows are our ally, the shallow the shadows are how we hide and how we find cunning in determining using deception, using guile to get information and wit just to stay hidden, stay unknown for what we're doing. Oh, wit was the knights. No, wit was both. Okay. So just attributes you live by, so you know, the shadows are allies, you're like information gatherers and kind of sneaky sneakies um so the elf character comes up and his name is nightshade he's telling us about that i'm like oh what are the guilds i'm not in any guilds and so he tells us about the guilds and i was like oh you're sneaky pointing at vex and he's like not much of a ranger and he's like and nightshade's like let me guess assassin and i was like oh he's good at this <laughs> and so in order to join the guilds you have to perform a task for them to like prove your initiation so yeah you get you kind of will get some quests from the characters in the park too and so the things you had to do was you had to brave the uh crypts and count the number of creatures there you had to hide behind a cast member for 30 seconds without being noticed and you had to gather information about one of the other guilds and so we've accepted this, and uh, he's going to do it. And so we walk away, and just, like, no time at all later, just, like, right instantly, we're walking past the other Elven Ranger character who's talking to other guests. So he just kind of, like, slides in behind her and just kind of, like, does this. This is my him impression. I'm all cool and beautiful anyway. and quiet in darkness. Anyway, um... And he manages to stay behind her for 30 seconds and just kind of like slink around and like, it's like, first task done. Was she impressed? She jumped a little bit. <laughs> and then um, we went to the crypts, which 
he just went in ahead of me and I'm like following him and I'm like, hey, where'd you go? Vax, Vax. Not cool because I ended up going through like alone and they give you like these little glow lanterns in your dark crit. Did. It's full of vampires because it's the Halloween storyline right now. Um, and some are just like vampire statues and some are like those animatronics that jump out at you and some are actors who like step out and like no one, it's, a, it's not a touch thing, but it's like kind of a mini haunted house and I did shriek once. Yeah. Um, and so we counted the vampires and then the third quest was to um, get that information and it's really easy to do because the guilds will tell you about themselves because they're all kind of recruiting. Um, but we had stepped up to talk to a random knight character. The, le the okay. leader of the knights and the town's guard. Huh. Leader of the knights and the town's guard. Um, because I had a theory about the murders and I thought- The knights were also the most gullible people to get information out of. I didn't know about your ulterior motives. I thought- That was entirely why I went. Oh, I thought we were going to tell them about my murder theory. Sure. I also- knew that they would be the easiest to get information out of. Right. So I... Trustworthy. Right. one of their tenants. So what, you think trustworthy people are just gullible? A little bit. Okay. Oh, no one's going to be able to hear you. Okay. Sorry, that was my roommate who agrees with him. Um, so we are going up to talk to the guy because I have a murder theory. And I'm going to like just kind of backtrack because now we're together, but we're kind of doing two different quests. We have our own like arc and goals and that's really cool. So I had come up with a theory about the murder because one of the characters in the park is a ghost of one of the victims who can't speak because she was strangled. So she can't talk. Um, but so she can like sign and pantomime and he was pretty good at figuring out what she was saying. And so we would figured out that she'd been killed while on a first date and her boyfriend didn't do it, which would be my first thought of like, well, who was she with? You know, kind of suspicious, but he, you know, it was ruled out. And the second victim was someone who was killed on their wedding day and so it's like, oh, was so... Was poisoned at his bachelor party. But then died on his wedding day. Yep. And so I was like, okay, maybe the connection is love. So they're killing people who are cared about in order to create grief. Because there's a another storyline is that the darkness is invading. Because there's this, like, dark, evil, tree fey thing. And... It's the fey king. Well, he's like a... He's not a tree. He's he kind of branchy. I guess. That was just his horns, but okay. He, okay, so he's a scary fae guy. And he wants to bring darkness uh, to the world of lore. Um, like, And he's offering rewards if you'll spy on the guilds and bring him information. And says he'll give immortality in exchange for helping spread the darkness. So I'm pretty sure he's evil. Pretty sure. And so... Well, what feeds darkness? Negative emotions? Grief? So that's a motive. So then I have this theory about the murders. And, um, you know, and I'm just gathering bits of information just randomly. Because, like, as we're walking, we run into some other people who are on their own quest to do the spell components. And they're reading the spells. And he says, is that Latin? And they're like, I guess. And I'm like, oh, I speak Latin! because I took four years of Latin in high school and I have never used it. It has never been useful other than just kind of being cool. And I, maybe SATs, eh, I don't know. But I'm like, oh, I speak Latin. So I'm like, it's like, it, I think it means, and I'm like, okay, it's past tense. And okay, so that's the subject of this sentence. So I think it means this. And they were really impressed that randomly like, oh, I speak Latin. They're like, you speak Latin? That's like, convenient. Like... And that was really cool to just be helpful to other people on their quests. Like, we're part of this cool fantasy world. And so they had given me more information. So I'd piece that all together. Because um, I had mentioned, like, oh, I'm trying to solve the murders. And my theory. And I think they were the ones who told me that the darkness does feed on negative emotions. So I think it was in the book. Or in the paper somewhere. Well, I didn't read the paper. 
I actually read the paper. I didn't, re I didn't read the whole thing. I was just like, ooh, murders. And then got distracted. But... So it was really fun to get to help them, and it was fun to like kind of be piecing this together. So I'm like, okay, I need to help the knight who said of the um, crown of uh, the town guard about this, and um, I tell him that you know I think it's people who are in love or are loved by someone are getting killed, and he actually used that to help with his quest to get information because when we went back to the ranger guy he's well, so while we were talking to the knight a group of other people came up and asked him how he felt about this character named piper and he got really defensive and got really like shy and did tell about talk about the three things he liked about her but in the same regard was still very like shy and quiet about it so i'm like okay so um, they were on a separate quest from a girl character to ask the guy character the three things he liked best about her. And then when I said they're killing people who are in love, he got really worried looking. And looked in the same direction he had looked previously when being asked about her. So he went and he's, he goes back to the ranger who recruited him. He's like, okay, it's like there are nine vampires in the crypt. I did the 30 second task uh, with the head of the elves, and um, I have I information. Two pieces of information. Because you just wanted to, like... I just, I was playing with the guy. And the first piece of information... Which was, like, they're doing their initiation, initiation at, ceremony at 9.30, and he like, kind of just, like... Uh-huh. And he kind of just was, like, okay, yeah. 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 And, I'm like, and everyone knows that, because all of the ra all of the, the guilds, guilds are doing it at, at, at 9.30, 9:30. and this is just information they'll tell everyone. And he's like, and the second piece of information... And, and then I just go, so I think the knight is... The lead knight is in love with this character, and he goes, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? He's like, that's interesting. That's, like, actual information that you shouldn't be able to pick up quickly, because it's a plot point on a separate quest. And then we told him about how we came to that conclusion and then shared our theory about why the murder happened. And I kind of like put my foot in my mouth about how much grief must hurt because I didn't realize that he's actually the guy who was on a date with her when she was yeah. murdered. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, about that. Because I just knew she was on a date. I didn't know with who, but I guess it was Nightshade. We found that out later. Later. Yeah, I didn't know. And it's not like she could tell me her boyfriend's name. She can't talk. But yeah... But we had a theory, and then um, after um, the ranger's initiation, you can do more quests uh, to go up higher levels, and um, so he was going to take advantage of that, but I wanted to do some more exploring, because I wanted to ask around, find out more information about the different murder victims. And we ended up going in this tavern, which, again, it looks like a D&D tavern. It's really cool. And I um, was there, and these other people walked in who were critters, and they're like, oh, Keyleth of the Ashari in Bounds. You're like, I am such a fan of the exploits of Vox Machina. And I'm like, oh, Katya, okay, really? Oh, thank you so much. That is so nice. And... And then I waved him down. I'm like, oh, Vax, come here, say hi. So we ended up at a table, and he went up to go talk to the barkeep because he's getting information about the poisoned flask that had killed the guy at the bachelor party. And I was like, oh, are you investigating the murders? I have a theory about that. So then I tell them my theory about the motive. So then we have a means and a motive, and we're like, but now we just need a who. And... So then we're like, well, let's see who might have more information about stuff. And so we were looking around, asking different people. And in the meantime, he's just popping in and out, like disappearing, reappearing, because he's running off to do more quests for the guild. <laughs> and do uh, you want to tell him what you were doing while we were questing? Like you said, I was just running around doing different quests. I had to go up to one of the characters who's called this... Um, greasy goblin and put a clothespin on his back without him noticing and then take it off his back without his noticing. Sneaky. Um, How'd that go? I put it on him 
without him noticing, but as I went to reach to pull it back off, he kind of picked up that I was there because the other people that were around were looking at me. So he turns around and asks me, so it's like, do you find something interesting on my back? And I'm like, no, I was just waiting. What's going on? And I walk around him to where he was interacting with the people already. Um, and they're like, well, he won't trade with us. And I'm like, oh, why not? And then he gets back to talking to them. Because I guess he's part of like a barter trade quest. No, he just does that. It's okay. just his character. Is he trades? He just trades with people. Um, yeah, I last time when I didn't know what I was doing, I was like, can you just give me gold? And he's like, no. And I'm like, okay, I'm bad at this. Um, but, and I walked away, and as I walked away, I just reached over and grabbed the clothespin and kept walking all in one motion. Very smooth. Uh, I had to patrol and count the number of infected people. Like the zombies. Yeah. And then... Uh, you had to go into the top part of the, so there's the crypts and there's a mausoleum on top and look at the book and then figure out what language it is. Yeah. And and that, the top part's full of giant spiders. Also kind of scary. <laughs> like, when the first time we walked through there, he went to go look at the book and the spider popped down and we're like, back up. We're like, no. Nope. Not doing no, this now. No, no spiders. And just, yeah, like, creepy, like zombies and vampires and skeletons just lots of undead and it was fun though yeah and the the hag in the hut because we were walking all over the place um asking different people who we were told might know more information and um we ended up coming up with a suspect um between me and the two friends we made which was really cool that we just kind of like formed a party and just started doing quests together us and this other couple and because when I had asked this one person, I was like, hey, so third victim, did anyone have a crush on him? And he's like, why are you asking? And I'm like, did he seem kind of standoffish about that? And it's like, well, we asked him earlier about the poison. He was standoffish too. And I'm like, do you think he did it? And then when we were talking to the ranger. It's like, he did try to poison someone last year. And it's like, what? Why? It's like, because they told his beloved to leave and she jumped through a portal. And we're like, okay. Well, creepy fey dude is offering deals, so maybe if the deal was I'll get your beloved back, if you kill people for me, would, would he kill for that? To get someone you love back? And it's like, That's hmm. a pretty common It's like, thing. I'll have to look into that. Just like, so it, it really helped, felt like we were really helping with this investigation and changing and shaping the storyline because and we don't know if we really were or if our theories were right at all but it kind of felt really cool to be like a part of another world and doing adventures and um and when i had shared with our new friends the theory um and who we thought a victim might be it's like well we know these two are in love it's like oh these two other people are in love too it's like really it's like yeah it's like it's like i'll go warn them so we were like actively warming warning them to stay safe and that they might be a target and no one was killed the night we were there, and I don't know if it, that just wasn't scripted to happen, or if we actually... It didn't sound like it was scripted to happen, but... because after looking up some stuff, it turns out that there's a... The person, the guy who was poisoned, had been followed around by somebody with it, dressed in all black with a lantern over their head. So... Yeah. I, and, like, put the lantern over their head when the guy, the guy passed out. Huh found that on reddit well, after we yeah. got back maybe it wasn't scripted or maybe yes warning changed things i mean that could be too i mean it just it feels it could be cool, that cool though to think that by us interacting with the story we could actually change it and shape it and like save lives or prevent death but it's like we want to go back and keep exploring that and finding more and doing more of the tasks and because he leveled up so now he has more quests and I, I was one quest away from getting to the to the journeyman rank. Isn't that like you have to catch a zombie? Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah. Uh, so we want to go back and keep doing it. And then um, right before we left, the lantern guy. Not the lantern guy. I think so they're candle-headed dude. So there's a tall pretty ethereal looking guy who has a, a hat with candles on it and you're calling him the candle man who, which no one else could see none of the townsfolk could, could see that's none another of the thing. actual actors yeah so that's another thing is the cast members couldn't see the ghost characters and apparently couldn't see the lantern man 
The candle the, the candle guy. The candle man. The candle man. But the candle man is always there. He was there the last time we were there, too. I know. I've seen him. He's noticeable. Um, um, so he's kind of watching us, but I'm like kind of creeped down. I'm like, what is it? What's up with the candle guy? Well, he had also walked up previously while we were talking to one of the ranger guys. And touched his... His little oh, oh, identifying identified. necklace. Because they wear little glow symbols that have the Evermore symbol on it, so you can tell who's a guest cosplaying and who's like a cast member. And um, he had apparently also done this to someone else who had suffered memory loss right after, so... Huh. Yeah, that was our new friends. The knight had mentioned that. He was talking to one of the knight people when that happened. And then so, right after he came and did that to Nightshade. Ooh, so, so we don't know what the, that's about. Are they erasing our theories? I don't know. We don't know who the candle guy is, but he was kind of following us back as we're headed towards the exit. We were hanging out talking, just kind and, of. Yeah, because they're doing their last shanty of the night before we all walk out. And uh, he comes up and he kind of walks he past like me. He walks so, into the middle of our group. And slides in to whisper something to him. And I'm like, what did he just whisper to you? And he said, said, um, Ardigan sends his his regards. regards. Like, Ardigan sends his regards. Like, what does that mean? I'm like, what is it? Because we're thinking, what does it have to do with Evermore? Who's Ardigan? What? And then I'm back at the hotel and I'm like trying to go to sleep. I'm like, Ardigan the (laughs) Archfey? And I'm like, I wake up. I'm like, Chris, are you awake? And it's like, what? what?" It's like, Ardigan the Archfey. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm trying to sleep. I don't even remember that happening. What? Me telling you? Yeah. You, You were asleep. Okay. I woke you up and I was like, it's I don't Ar- remember, Ardigan. It's like, like, it's a critical role reference. So it's like he's playing back with us. And I'm like, oh, does that mean the candle dude's a fae? Is he an arch fae? A candle fae? Like, I want to go back and play more with that and kind of play my own live action crossover fan fiction with this. And it's so cool that I get to like be Keyleth and play with that. And I hope Marisha Ray isn't mad about that. Of me kind of playing with our character a little bit in terms of cosplay but um super fun super fun and exciting and it was just really great like we made friends while there we interacted with the story felt really engaged with it it's like i've never felt this kind of entertainment before where you really are kind of transported to another world it's immersive and you really get to be a hero. Like I felt like I got to be Keyleth and he got to be Vax and I think he really loves sneaking up on people. I mean, I've been doing it since I was 10, so. (laughs) And um, other things that were fun. Oh, you get, there's things you can do there. Like you could do ax throwing and I'm not good at that. Archery, um, which I actually am good at that. Like it, it took me a second to like, figure out how to hold the bow because I was like super nervous about holding it and he had to like come up and like show me like how to I am like super clumsy I'm like okay two three okay but once I figured out how to hold it I hit the target and the targets are painted to look like monsters so it's like an orc so I got a headshot and a body shot and I'm like cool I'm good at this and uh there's food which is really good and they they sold they sell out super fast so I wanted some of like the food, and they didn't have any of it, and that was kind of disappointing. So another reason we want to go back, the food, because we go up, and I was like, it's like, can I get the goblin goulash? It's like, we're out of that. Can I get the macaroni and cheese? We're out of that. Can I get the poutine? We're out of that. Like, they kind of were out of everything. But, um, like, God, my hair's in my eyes, and I don't even know which way to brush it, because camera. It was, like, a lot of fun, though. Even, we did find some food. We got, like, a bratwurst and stuff, and... We got lots of hot chocolate to keep warm and explored oh my God, all the hot chocolate. <laughs> like all the different places and kind of got immersed in the story and it was really, really fun. And I just I like I like getting to be Keyleth and he liked getting to be Vax and be transported. And I think that if you wanna really get the most out of Evermore, you kinda of have to let yourself just become someone else and take part in that story. And you'll have an amazing time, you know. And I think that's why you kind of need to go multiple times. Because the first time it's just kind of, you're looking at everything. There's so many people, there's so much to do. It's really hard to, like, just start off in it because there's a lot. It's overwhelming. But, you know, going back and just with the mindset of 
okay, we're gonna play pretend, we're gonna be immersed in this, we're gonna be in this world, do what you want, be who you want, then 